Hey, I'm here working on a 1947 Ford tractor and I'm rewiring it, uh, among other things. And I want to add a starter solenoid to control the starter motor just for an extra level of safety. Because in 1947, they didn't have a key switch for the starter. You could just push a button and make the starter turn over and that might be dangerous if some children were to play on it. I don't want it to be able to be moved without a key. And so I've got this starter solenoid I'm going to wire into the system, but I've run into a little issue with it. This particular uh, starter solenoid evidently has an internal diode that um, absorbs the reverse voltage that's generated when the coil releases. And I'll tell you what I, what I mean, what I've run into. So normally uh, you're using uh, negative ground, which my, my tractor is a positive ground. I've got this uh, solenoid here, and you can see uh, if I attach the negative here, it works perfectly. You can hear it clicking. That's the starter terminal from the from the key. But if I reverse the leads and hook it up like I'll be hooking it up on my tractor, you can just see it, I get a little arc. I don't get the coil moving, and uh, my my um, power supply goes into current protect motor mode. So what I need to do is drill these rivets out and see if I can locate that diode and just disable it, cut it cut it away and then I'll have my own diode in reverse direction. I still want to absorb the, the reverse voltage that's generated just to protect whatever I have in the tractor from getting uh, damaged because it's like it can be a very high voltage uh, when the coil collapses. So I'm going to I'm going to drill this out and modify it add my own diode externally. So drilling turned out to be the wrong approach because the drill was just heating up the plastic. So I'm, I'm gonna go to a Dremel tool and I'm gonna cut away from the, the rivet from the backside here. I'll see if I can pry this thing open. I can see uh, there's one wire connected right there. That looks like a diode lead to me. Sure enough, there it is, right there's the diode. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And put this back together. So you can see the diode. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of that. And you can see the polarity there. There's the, uh, the cathode and the anode is coming to the ground. I'll just cut, cut that. Actually, I'm just going to cut this whole diode off. And, uh, And next I'll put this all back together. I'm gonna to leave this uh, connection maintained here. So in the process of uh, removing the rivets, the, the little wire that was bonded to the case here broke off. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let it exit outside the, uh, the housing here. I'm gonna cut a little notch and let that come on out and I'll uh, connect to it uh, and run a ground over to the uh, the ground point. So in the process of moving it around the little uh, ground wire, the copper wire that was bonded uh, right here broke off. 
So I'm just going to let the exit, the wire exit out the case and I'll attach it to the mounting bracket as a ground. It'll work just as well. Actually, it may be more reliable. So I'm going to insert some rivets up into here. So I'm going to insert some rivets through the back here. If I can get it. And those will just be to guide the, um, the case. That way they, I can put this, uh, this on from that direction. Then install this. And those rivets will serve to guide while I install a rivet from this direction. Because I can't get my rivet gun to, uh, to rivet it from this direction, but I can get it to work from this direction. So now I need to add a connection to this, uh, this wire coming out of here. And I'm just going to use a terminal like this. I've got this wire stripped. I'm going to crimp this on there. And so now this, uh, this wire will just get attached like that with the mounting bolt. And I'm going to bring the wire around and um, solder it to here. I'm going to cut it about here. And attach it onto there like that with some solder. So I like to use uh, wire ferrules whenever I'm doing something like this. It just helps the uh, helps it be a better connection. I can put that in, crimp it together, and then solder that. And so next I can test uh, the result here. Got my power. This is the start terminal. This is the ground now. Right here. And so I'm going to be going positive ground. And let's see if this works now. Yep, beautiful. So now it'll work in either direction. Because it's just a DC coil. So now all I need to do is uh, I'll hook a diode externally to this to, to absorb the uh, reverse voltage that's generated. And I'm also going to epoxy this connection. It's kind of fragile sticking out the side here. I'm going to epoxy that down and uh, should be good to go.